I came into college and I had an idea of how I thought my life should be. If I had to describe my whole Michigan State career here, it would be in one verse. In Proverbs it says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's will that will prevail. I mean, let's go back to when he came in as a freshman. You know, he came in with an amazing class. Miles Bridges, Nick Ward, and Cassius Winston. And it was exciting, man, to be a part of that class. Josh was unbelievable. His first official practice, I don't think he missed a shot. He was just unbelievable in the best mid-range game I've ever seen. Langford will slither. Oh I have the three L rule. Do you like what you do? Do you love what you do? Or do you live for what you do? He was a live guy, and which is the highest. He was a live it. He spent more time in this gym, more time on those shooting machines. My sophomore year, my junior year, is when I really started to become known for my mid-range pull-up. Pull you know, Cassius Winston's our best player, but if you look at our most versatile player, Josh Langford was shooting 45% from the three-point line, 50 from the field, and was probably my best defensive guard at 6'5", and was my most experienced player because he started every year since his freshman year. In the game against Northern Illinois, I couldn't jump off my left foot, and I was just like, what is going on? So I kept trying to play, I kept trying to play. And then eventually it just got to a point where I told the trainer, I was like, I, you know, I can't play anymore. Langford, you know, look, he's been struggling. Got some ankle soreness, we've been told, from the Michigan State bench, likely not going to return. It was a stress fracture. It was shocking to me. It was just like, wow. I couldn't believe that, especially with the way the season was going, the way I was playing, that my season was over. I believe he would have been a first round pick if he would have continued to play the way he was playing had he not got hurt because he was playing at an unbelievable level. That was a big loss for us, but what a loss for him, a guy who lived it, you know? And, and not as many people live it as you'd think. I ended up having to get surgery. I got a screw put in my foot. The plan was to do the surgery, go through rehab, get ready for my senior year. A month or so before the season, it was fracturing again. And this time it was fracturing in a different way. And so that was another blow. He was just like, man, I can't believe this. This kid did everything you could do. You know, it is kind of hard because you feel so bad for him and then reality sets in. Like I said, I try to be a man of faith. You know, you still get things that, that rock you in your life. So it was still a shocker to me. It was told to me that my season would be over. Two, three, four, five, good. <laughs> I don't believe God has cut my time short with basketball yet. My basketball career is not over. The recovery time is about four to six months. Right now I'm just doing the little rehab that I can, just working out, just trying to stay in shape. I know how he feels mentally, because I know that when you're on a team that's really good, and last year they were really good, they go to the Final Four, and he can't play. You know, I've been there, where I've sat on the bench and I've watched. You're on the team, but you don't really feel like you're on the team. He could be a medical redshirt and probably come back. I haven't really came to a complete decision, and the good thing about it is I have options. The appreciation for Josh wants me to say, Josh, if you're comfortable, go for it, you know? Um, the selfishness in me says, hey, Josh, got another year, come on back. You've kind of put yourself in a position to be successful here, but your body, it's betrayed you. It's like winning the negative lottery. And unfortunately, I won it twice. Hummel into the lane. Robbie Hummel is down. My goodness. And it honestly felt like my leg blew up. And one of their orthopedic surgeons was, was there and he checked me out. Deep down, I knew. I knew that my season was probably over. And so was the dream of going to the Final Four. So I had one more year of eligibility. The NBA thing kind of got put on hold for a year, but I, I, I was pretty positive. So I had the surgery, the rehab. I was trying to get back as fast as I could. I wanted to be ready for the season opener because we were ranked preseason number two. 
And then first day of practice comes along, I get cleared to do everything, and Etwan Moore just drives right at me. I jump up, and I felt it totally right away. I knew it. You know, you very well may be an ACL tear away from being done with basketball and never playing again. You, know, you talk about devastation. That's the lowest of the low. Even though my career here may have been cut shorter than expected, I'm not against listening to anybody um, who's been there before me. So I'm just seeking counsel. I played five years of professional basketball. I was two in the NBA, and I was three overseas with a year in Spain, a year in Italy, a year in Russia. If you're a guy that had NBA aspirations, coming off foot injuries, and you've been going through some rehab stuff, and you haven't been able to play, it's probably a long shot in the first year that he could get to the NBA right now. From his standpoint, if he's going to go overseas, the medical staffs are not the same as you're used to dealing with at Michigan State. At Michigan State, you have people that you trust and you've been around and can help you get through this. But I also understand the, the desire to go play. It stinks. It's not fair because Josh Langford is good enough to be a pro and he's good enough to play in the NBA.